Good morning. I want to welcome you to our services this morning here at the Lake Havasu Church of the Nazarene. It's good to see all of you who are gathered here with us this morning. We're beginning to see a few more show up each week, and it's good to see all of you here. Those of you who are joining us online, we thank you for joining us. What we're here for this morning is to worship. It's to worship God. It's to hear his word. It's to bring ourselves away from the world for a few moments and the distractions that it brings and to worship him. We have some activities going on here. Our ladies Bible study is meeting on Tuesdays. Our men's Bible study is meeting on Thursdays. And our youth have begun meeting again. They're meeting on Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock. So some things are beginning to happen, some great things. If you would, though, too, uh, go to Facebook like us on Facebook, repost our services so that those uh, in your area of influence, your friends, will begin to hear and know about the Lake Havasu Church of the Nazarene. Well, again, welcome this morning. Stand with us and let's begin our worship time this morning by singing, I will praise him. Wait a minute. I got to turn things on so I can hear. There we go. So the cleansing fountain open wide for all my sin. I will be the Spirit's moving. Oh, when He said, "Will thou be clean?" I will praise Him. and wishes at my feet in ashes lay then God's fire upon the altar oh my heart was set aflame I shall never cease to praise him Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm so glad he took me in. He's forgiven my transgressions. He has cleansed my heart from sin. Glory, glory. Glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory to the Spirit. Glory to the Three in One. Now I will praise Him. Jesus can wash away all of the stains that sin has left in our lives. I cast my mind to Calvary where 
Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all seated this time. We're going to take a few moments to worship the Lord through our giving. Uh, once again, there is a, a box on the back wall. If you uh, have your tithes, your offerings that you would like to place while the offertory is being played, uh, we can also receive your tithes and offerings, your gifts online, and uh, you can also drop them by the church at any time. Let's bow our heads for prayers. We thank God for his provision in our lives. Thank you, Lord for how you have provided in our lives and that we bring back to you that portion that you've asked for plus the portions that we give as just our free gifts to you this morning. I pray that you would bless these funds. May they be used to serve you here and around the world, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Sharon and Anthony. Perhaps no song presents the gospel any more simply or any more clearly than, yes, Jesus loves me. Thank you for sharing that with us this morning. We're going to ask you to stand again as we continue in worship this morning. And uh, I prayed earlier about how God has provided for us. He is God, our provider. Well, I believe you are able. I believe you are good. I believe you are with me. every mountain that I face. I believe you will supply all I need. You're all I need. Till the ocean runs dry, my God is my You're my pro 
to ask you this morning, do you believe that he is able? And do you believe that he is greater than any mountain that you're facing in your life right now? And that until this earth is no more, he will be our provider. We're going to prepare for prayer at this time. Pastor will come and lead us in a few moments in our congregational pastoral prayer. I would say to you that however you feel comfortable in your prayer time this morning, if you wish to sit, if you wish to stand, if you wish to kneel, please be in a spirit of prayer as we sing together this song this morning. faithful and it is humbling to think that the God who created the heavens and the stars and the planets and the suns and the moons created me and you know my name in some cases you rename us Lord you knew me before I was born and you will know me eternally beyond time and you care for me and you provide for me you care for each of us and you care for your church you care for the faithful and you care for the lost you care for the birds and you care for the flowers you care for all of your creation your creation knows your name we cry out to you so that the rocks don't have to. We praise you for who you are. We, we recognize you in this moment today for who you are, our most sovereign, holy God of eternity. We worship you. We praise you for who you are. And with the intimacy of our hearts, we cry out our need to you today. You know them, Lord. You hear them now. As we lift them up in just a, a moment of silence, just hear each of our thoughts and prayers and requests, Lord. are so powerful and able. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you with our deepest requests and needs. We praise you 
In Jesus' name, amen. no worship like live worship, right? <laughs> it's good to be here. It's good to see some of you I haven't seen in a while. And uh, we're filling up, but we do have room for a few more. We can have up to 50 before we have to hide you. <laughs> we'll, we'll be, we'll be law-abiding citizens. We, we have other rooms that we can put you. So <laughs> uh, if you feel comfortable coming back to church, the doors are open. Uh, we had a great start on our youth group. We're starting to build some momentum. Um, anybody ready for this whole COVID thing to be over? <laughs> yeah. Anybody ready for the election to be over? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anybody ready for the summer to be over? It is hot. Uh, but it's okay. Time marches on and we're going to get through this. And God's still doing great things in the church. Don't miss it. Don't hang your head in the sand because things are going on. God's got my attention this week. He convinced me that he's real all over again. And uh, I hope before it's all done and said this morning, God nudges your heart and directs you on what you need to be focusing on this coming week. God's with us. He loves it when we worship and uh, come together in his name. And I believe he's got a special message for each and every one of you. My message is very basic. But God's message for you today is very, very personal to you and to your life and where you're at right now. So um, enough of me. Be listening for God this morning. There's something here for you. So thank you for joining us in the building. And thank you to our online audience. Be sure to give us one of these. And, um, you know, somebody today told me they didn't realize we're also on YouTube. YouTube's a very quick and easy way to see all of our uh, messages messages going back some time. Uh, just the messages, it's easy to find. So if you just go to YouTube and put in uh, Lake Havasu Church and the Nazarene, you'll see us there as well as on our webpage where you can watch back sermons and um, of course on Facebook and Facebook Live. So, all right. Uh, we are in the series uh, Freedom in Christ. We're on week seven and we have been learning from Paul's letter to the Galatians. And in this, these, uh, or in this letter, he basically concentrates on two truths. First, we as human beings can connect with the real and risen and sovereign God. And then second, we can display the attributes of Jesus Christ in our lives. Those two things. Now, the first truth, specifically, is that we connect with Jesus not by impressing God and obeying all of the law perfectly, but we um, relate to and come into a relationship with God through our faith in Jesus Christ alone. And that's Galatians chapters 1 through 4. The second truth, more specifically, is that by having faith in Christ and receiving the Holy Spirit, we now become more like Christ. Not in our own strength, 
But because the power of the Holy Spirit lives through us, so as we walk in the strength of the Spirit, we show those attributes of Christ. And that's Galatians 5 and 6. Now, in my household, every, I don't know, my Candy said it was forever, maybe not forever, but for a long, many, many years, every time Kent would say goodbye to the girls, even now, uh, on occasion, he'll say, I love you, be good, do good, sound Christian mind and a sound Christian body. Yep, Dad, bye. And so it, it, was, always, it was always the mantra in the house. He embedded it in their thoughts. Be good, do good, sound Christian mind in a sound Christian body. Um, <laughs> Candy admitted yesterday when they asked her about it, she wasn't even sure what, <laughs> what half of it meant. But she got the be good, do good part and the sound Christian mind part. And when I said, well, in a sound Christian body, she's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> they may have rolled their eyes a couple of times, Kent. But Kent is a solid Christian father. And what he said to those girls and continues to say to them is as relevant now as it was back in Paul's era as he's writing this letter to the Galatians, which is basically saying the same thing. Be good because you know God and do good because you love God and because God works through your lives and living through you. It's the same message. It's the title of the sermon in case you haven't noticed that. Be good, do good. That's the fast and easy way to describe Galatians. Now, of course, Bible authors uh, and parents can only get so far influencing their kids with our words. It needs to become a decision of each of our minds. We need to make that decision of with whom we will identify and how that will live out in our lives. And this reminds me of a story that I read of a mom. She's preparing pancakes for her kids. She has Kevin, who is five, and Ryan, who is three. And they begin to argue while they're waiting, who's going to get the first pancake? <laughs> so their mom sees this opportunity for a moral lesson. And she says, well... You know, if Jesus were here, great way to start it out. If Jesus were here, he would say, let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. So Kevin turns to his younger brother and says, okay, you be Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and so with that, we head into Galatians chapter 6, and we're going to just start in with verse 7 and go a few verses today. Verse 7, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant or reap what you sow. You sow love, you're going to reap Love, you sow kindness, reap kindness. Sow patience, reap patience. Whatever you regularly and habitually sow, that is what you will regularly and habitually will reap. So, this little saying from Paul, don't be misled. God's not going to be mocked. It gives us this reminder that God knows our heart and our thoughts. He knows what we are doing. He knows what our actions are. We serve a just God who knows us. Now that can be a little scary because a just God also reminds us that there are consequences when we sin. But there's a flip side to this that sometimes parents forget to tell their children. <laughs> See, because God is just, God also sees when we do good things. God sees them and he recognizes them. He sees your goodness. He sees your compassion. He sees what you do at home and when nobody's looking in the grocery store or on the street or with your neighbors. God sees you living out righteousness in your life and God rewards that. Jesus promises us in Mark 9.41, If anyone gives you a cup of water because you belong to the Messiah, I tell you the truth, that person will surely be rewarded. God knows your hearts and blesses you as you live out God's will now, here, and 
in eternity. Paul continues with the harvest analogy. Galatians 6, 8. Those, I think we have it. Galatians 6, 8. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Again, there are rewards for our faith, everlasting life, and rewards for doing good. Pleasing the Spirit gives life, gives life to us. It's good news. And then Paul encourages us to persevere. Persevere with that thought. You will be rewarded. Just hang in there a little bit longer. Verse 9. Let's not get tired or weary or grow faint or give up. Don't. Let's not get tired of doing what is good. This is Paul. It's his pep talk here. And this is good from Paul to give a pep talk, okay? Because we get a lot of stuff from Paul. But this is the pep talk. And notice he includes himself. Let us not get tired of doing good. He's rallying himself along too. I mean, he must have been very tired. He had some very long days in dark dungeon. It's like, no, dark dungeons. Don't give up. Come on. Let us keep going. Let's, let's finish the race. Come on, folks. And he's pumping them up. And he's saying, we can do this. It's worth it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Next phrase. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest. Now, the bad news is we don't know when just the right time is. It's hard to be patient for something you can't see and you don't know when it's coming. But it's coming. It will happen at just the right time. Just the right time. I don't like it still. I can't make it sound good. Because to me, the right time was yesterday. <laughs> so let's put it this way. At God's perfect time. We need to trust God's perfect timing. So in God's timing, we will reap a harvest. It's not a lot easier if you're um, short on patience. <laughs> I'm working on it. It's that part of that fruit. I know it's there. We're growing it. It's just hard to see the growth, <laughs> which reminds me, uh, fourth grade science class. We got these little bean seeds and put them in a baggie with like a tablespoon of water. And then we had to wait a few days. I, I don't know if we put them in wrap paper towel around them or not. Seems like we did wet paper towel. And we had to wait, oh, I don't know, one, two, five days or something. That little seed began to sprout the bean or something. And then we took that and we planted it into um, like little flower pots with soil. And we were learning about soil. That's where I learned the layers of soil. So there was gravel on the bottom and et cetera. But we had our soil and we put the bean in there and we added water and we lined them all up, all 30 of them. That was back when there was 30 in elementary school. Lined them up on the windowsill and we waited some more. Every day we'd add our water. I don't know, I think I thought it was a race or something. But mine was not the first to sprout and it felt like forever. I don't know how long it took for that being to work its way up and finally break the soil. But we were all very excited as our beans started to come up in the soil because we had waited a long time. And then, you know, when that bean breaks through the soil, it's not the bean, the plant of the bean, there's no beans on it. You have to wait longer before there's actually something to eat. You know, you have to wait and wait and repot it and repot it. And at some point, I think it was Mother's Day, they told us to take all our bean plants home to our mothers. <laughs> My mother told me, well, if I want to see beans, I had to keep taking care of it. But mom, it's a Mother's Day present. <laughs> it's a gift for you. You take care of it. I did not ever see any beans on my bean plant. I just, I didn't have the patience. I think it died. Maybe I forgot to water it. But the point is, there were things happening under the soil that we could not see. The bean was still growing, or I mean the roots were growing while the plant was just slowly making its way up through this. We couldn't see it all. 
We certainly, I know, I did not understand all that was going on. I knew that I was adding, adding water, for the most part sometimes, <laughs> and that something was happening, but it couldn't happen fast enough even uh, back then. It was too long to wait for me. Sometimes we feel that in our Christian walk. I'm doing all this work and nothing's happening. But there are things that we cannot see that are happening. We just see this little tiny bit and there's this whole big picture going on. God brings one person in to nudge someone, then another person, another person. That person is working it through and their free will is working and God's still doing things and God's grace is pulling them and then something else happens in their life and someone else is right there. It, the picture is so much bigger than what we think when we're looking, say, at the top of the soil of a little potted plant. We don't get it all. There's so many things that we cannot see, but at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. Don't give up. Keep with it. Persevere. It builds your character and it builds your faith. You just keep pushing through every single day, every single day day, every single day and today until you go on to the next thing. And, and maybe you're doing both things at once. Whatever God has you to do, you do it consistently trusting in the Lord. And as you do, God will bring the increase. It's another promise. 1 Corinthians 3.7 so then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. It's about what God is doing. We are his instruments when we are blessed to be included in his plan. God gives the increase. We have to trust that God sees the big picture even when we don't. We have to be willing to participate even when we are not in control and don't see every little detail. We have to celebrate when we see our part, knowing that there's even more to come, maybe for somebody else. We have to trust in the blessing it encourages us, but we also have to know we're never going to see the big picture until God takes us home. We do our part. We celebrate our faithfulness and what it produces. Remember, we reap what we sow, and we celebrate that. Quick story. Uh, I was, I, oh, I'm always praying that God will give me uh, new and fresh stories to help drive a biblical point home. And in fact, if any of you got some stories on fear, we're going to have our next uh, sermon series is coming up here in September. And I would love to hear your stories of scary situations or where God has helped you in a fearful situation. But uh, anyways, I pray for uh, stories to help biblical points as all pastors do, actually, I think. Um, and I had just written what I just said uh, on verse 9. I had just written it, and the postal worker came in. Uh, she's a substitute one, I mean, or maybe she just comes in on Thursdays, but uh, she, I don't see this particular worker every day, and I don't think she's ever been in my office, but she came all the way into my office. We, uh, she had a mask on. Her name is Lori. And she said, I just want to tell you a story. And she said, there was this older woman who lived down the street from me when I was a kid. Uh, her name was Joyce Morgan. And Mrs. Morgan would go around in our neighborhood in Linden, Washington, driving the church van. And she would pick up kids from our neighborhood and take us to the little Nazarene church there in Linden. And she said, and I, I hope I have this right, she said, she sowed the seeds that led me to Christ, and then my brother, and then my mom, even though my mom was divorced. And who knows how many others. This woman, Joyce Morgan, was sowing and sowing the seeds. And this woman, Lori, came in to tell me about it. And I am still blessed. It's like, God's so good. I had just typed 
We sow what we reap. And she tells me this story. She didn't know what I was preaching on today. I hope she's watching. <laughs> I told her, I'm like, I'm going to use that story. And after she left, I looked up Linden, Washington. It's actually north of, straight north of Seattle. All, if a strong wind blows, it would be in Canada. I mean, it's real north. And uh, it's right there. The Nazarene Church is now called Cross Point. And so I went to their Facebook page, and <laughs> this is, God's so creative. Uh, the, what's it called, the um, cover photo on their Facebook page is the bottom half of our screen. Do you recognize it's a perfect match to my PowerPoint, this sermon series? I know you probably can't read that, uh, what it said. It said on their Facebook page, come discover a God who is passionate about you. But I thought of all the screens they could have put that against, it's just a perfect match for us today. And I thought, you know, God knew exactly where I was headed. <laughs> well, we continue on. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And then verse 10, therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. So what do we do? Good. Oh, you're such good listeners. <laughs> to whom shall we do good towards? Everyone. Especially our brothers and sisters in the faith. And when shall we do it? Whenever we have the opportunity. As we have the opportunity does not mean that we get a break when it's inconvenient, like during a pandemic. Not even when we are suffering. Not even when it's tough or it's embarrassing or someone doesn't look like us. Whatever. Uh, 1 Peter 4.19 So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and do good even when you're suffering. Are we excused from doing good when someone's mean to us or hurts our feelings? First Thessalonians 5.15 says, See that no one repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. And how about if we're fighting back darkness, how do we do that? Fighting back that which is evil? Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's right. Your, your guys are catching on. One last one from Jesus himself, Luke 6, 27. I say to you who hear, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. It's pretty consistent, isn't it? John Wesley summarizes it like this. Do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. There we go. All right. Do good. Be good. As we live in the Spirit, we become more like Christ. I hope you got this down. How do we become more like Christ? We become full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We, we get it, right? We get that fruit, and we live it out to others, the foundation of them being love. We love others. Love God. Love others. Now, there's two things you have to remember. Well, four things. <laughs> love God. Love others. Be good. Do good. That is the Christian walk. Our minds and our beliefs and God's spirit, they influence how we walk. They influence our actions. We are good so that we become good or we do good. As a man thinks, so is he. As you believe and as you take in who Jesus is, that's how we live out our faith. And I love the way that Paul says this in Ephesians 8, 2, 8. By grace you've been saved through faith as a gift from God so that we can do good. The good that God prepared for us to do. This is important. The good that God prepared for us to do. 
See, there's a whole lot of good that needs to be done, but each of us is only called to do part of it to who we can, when we can, how we can. We need to be faithful to what God's calling us to do, but we're not going to save the whole world. Even Jesus didn't do that. So let's consider how we do not grow weary. That's the first tip. We can't do it all. We must trust God for help. I forgot to tell you about your notes. If you're keeping notes, hopefully you are up to speed. Do not give up. God gives the increase. Do good, be good. And now, how not to grow weary? Well, one way is we need to trust God to give us help. We must trust God for help. The timing and the increase and the calling and the power, they're all from God. We just keep doing what we are to do. All the, all the hard, 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 heavy lifting, that's from God. We need to obediently walk the walk. Also, the fruit of the Spirit is from God. The goodness is part of that fruit of the Spirit. God gives us in our own spiritual um, makeup whatever gift we need to take out to the world to share. Our spiritual giftedness is from God. So in other words, not everybody's called to teach. Not everybody's called to, to speak out loud in front of a microphone or, or to, um, to help set up the chairs. Now, sometimes everyone's got to pitch in on the chairs. That's a bad example. But you're with me, right? You don't have to do it all. You need to be sensitive specifically to what God is asking you to do and then trust God for the help to do that. In order not to grow weary, we must also make sure that we are keeping the right motives. Are we serving God for God's, pur God's purposes or for our own? Some sort of kickback, you know, that people will notice us or that we'll get uh, some extra attention or appreciation or thank you card. Those things will never give you the energy to keep moving when you need to keep moving. It's the blessings from God that truly motivate us for the long term and the long haul. So if we're focusing on doing what God would have us do for today, that's what's going to propel us forward. Not if we're saying, oh, I did that, but I didn't get a thank you card. That's not going to do it. That is the seed to bitterness and to um, resentment. That others aren't giving you what you think you deserve for all your greatness. Our focus is on who God is and how he created us to love others and give to others. And then the blessings that turn out to be the most fulfilling are when we are living in the center of God's will and experiencing who God is in a real and true sense. Then we start to notice the blessing. We start to have an attitude of appreciation and we start to have the energy we need to keep us moving forward. In order to grow, not to grow weary, we need to maintain some balance in our life. It's a little bit harder. The Bible doesn't tell you to go brush your teeth, but you need to brush your teeth, okay? Uh, otherwise, you're going to spend time in the doctor's office, so you won't have that time to do ministry. I mean, in the big picture, you need to take a Sabbath. It's a commandment. You have to take your Sabbath. As you take your Sabbath... Your body will rest up and you'll find you have more energy to minister the rest of the week. So it's, it doesn't seem like it makes sense taking time off. How can I actually be more prepared and equipped for ministry? Well, you're not growing weary. You have more energy to do what God would have you to do. And you have a day set apart to call God holy. So there's rest. There's taking care of your physical body. Eating the right thing. Don't get me started. <laughs> Eat more vegetables. <laughs> Eat more fruit. Eat the right thing. Take care of your bodies. You'll find you have more energy. Get your sleep. Have time for fun. Have time for fellowship. We're built for community. As you put around yourself people that care about you, that energizes you. As you save time to be alone, that gives you time just to, to re-energize, to be in the Word and to meditate or to have quiet. 
You need to have this balance in your life. As you do, you are more effective and more able to be productive in ministry without wearing out. Now, okay, <laughs> I'm preaching to the pastor and not the choir here. <laughs> I know it's hard to find that balance, especially when you're motivated to do ministry. But you've got to check and double check that your priorities are right, that you're following what God would have you to do, that there's balance in your life, that you're leaning into God for help. And I'll add this last one. In order to not grow weary, you need to remain in Christian community. And I talked about this a little bit. You need that fellowship. You need people around you to encourage you, to help you stay straight, to hold you accountable, to sing songs together, to worship God together. You know, when you're hanging around a bunch of Christians, you, you don't feel like such a fish out of the water. When you're in the world too much and you, you forget what true Christians act like, it makes you tired to keep trying to do the work. You need those people around you to say, you're doing great, you're doing the right thing, you're normal. The rest of the world isn't. <laughs> I need people to tell me I'm normal sometimes. <laughs> Thank you for your letters. <laughs> Coming together as a Christian community, again, it was God's design. He says, don't don't give up coming together. Keep coming together. And I know COVID makes this nearly impossible. But find a way, those phone calls, Zoom calls, uh, online um, chat rooms, whatever it is with real Christian, like-minded people, churches coming back together, small groups, whatever it is, find a way to make it a regular part of your life. We need to remain in Christian community or you will grow weary. You will. We need the opportunity to be with others. Um, and I like it so that we can have those times of celebration together. It is such an encouragement to come together to celebrate. My, I'm ready for a baptism and a time when we celebrate people coming closer and closer to the Lord. It, again, God's working. And as we come together, we can see God's work and, and sharing the sacraments together. Um, we have a fifth Sunday, by the way, in whatever month we're in, August. So in two weeks, we'll have communion for those of you who uh, like to join us online. Um, sometimes I forget to mention that. On the first Sunday of the month, we will share uh, communion together as a body. If you are genuinely doing good, with the right motives on God's terms, serving others, not serving yourself, you will reap harvest. Hear this encouragement. Keep on keeping on. We're doing God's work. Keep moving forward day in and day out. God is with us, and we celebrate that. And you are doing a great job. <laughs> Keep sowing faithfully. Be good. Do good. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for who you are and for your faithfulness and for your promises. We don't always see the outcome, but we are excited because you do. So we do it for you, Lord, knowing that it blesses you and it makes you smile to see our faithfulness. Continue to encourage us, Lord, with the words and the love of others. Continue to show us that you're working in our lives and that the, the harvest is coming and it's coming now. Thank you for using all of us and the bits and pieces of us, even when we can't see the big picture, Lord. We trust you and we love you and we are excited to be part of your community. Thank you for all your gifts and thank you for using each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let me ask you a question. Are you ready for the week to be good and to do good? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Pastor. What an exciting sermon and a challenge. 
Uh, I have told our worship group before we began this morning or at our prayer time, you know, worship isn't really just about the singing that we do in church. True worship is what we take to the streets, what we take to our jobs, what we take to school, what we take out into the world, and how we live our lives. That is how we truly worship. Stand with us this morning. We want to close with, Lord, I lift your name on high, then remain standing for the closing scripture, if you would. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. My dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name.